everybody. Uh, thank you very much for uh, coming to this news conference. Just going to give you a few very basic ground rules, and then we'll get started. I appreciate your uh, uh, your waiting. There was a typo in the complaint we had to take care of. You can. Uh, we we're making copies of the the final complaint now. If you want to pick one up on your way out, uh, you you can do that. Um, so the way this is going to work is I'm going to introduce everybody. I'm going to make some introductory comments. We're going to go down the lane. Um, we'll move the microphones as we speak, so, so that will be taken care of. I would just ask that you um, hold off on any questions until, we, until everybody is okay. okay? Um, so again, thank you for coming here. Let me first start by introducing everybody at the table, and then I'll give some comments. Uh, immediate, to my immediate right is Peter Waslick, uh, who is the lead ACLU of Rhode Island cooperating attorney uh, handling this lawsuit. Uh, next to him is Lynette Labinger, uh, another ACLU cooperating attorney assisting um, in, in the case. And then to my far right uh, is Alexandra Morelli, uh, she is the lead plaintiff in this lawsuit, uh, and she is an employee who has been directly affected and harmed um, by the data breach that this uh, lawsuit is all about. Um, so uh, the ACLU has today filed a class action lawsuit against the Rhode Island Public uh, Transit Authority and United Healthcare over last year's massive data breach um, at RIPTA, they compromised the social security numbers as well as personal health care information of thousands of individuals, including many people who did not even uh, work at RIPTA. Um, as you'll hear in a few minutes, uh, this data breach uh, has caused enormous harm to, to many people. Um, but just as, <clears throat> just as important as getting legal relief uh, for the individuals who have been harmed by the data breach, uh, I think one of the most striking things to me, and <clears throat> one of the other reasons for the lawsuit, is to get answers uh, as to how this happened. Um, it is now more than a year since this breach occurred, um, yet we still don't have answers uh, to many basic questions uh, about this incident. For example, um, we don't know why RIPTA had personal information, including personal health care information, of over 15,000 employees who were not employed by RIPTA. Um, we don't know how or why United Healthcare provided those records to RIPTA in the first place, uh, or why RIPTA didn't inform United Healthcare that they had these records of individuals who didn't work for them. We don't know why it took RIPTA more than four months uh, to notify in affected individuals of the brief when state law requires um, that notification be provided within 45 days. We also don't know why RIPTA didn't tell any of these individuals in particular what information was taken about them. For some, it may have just, it may have been their personal identifiable information like social security numbers, but for others, their personal health care information was also breached, but nobody has been told what information in particular has been taken. Uh, and finally, uh, we don't know why RIPTA, when it um, first posted a notice about the breach back in December, um, stated that the breach only involved RIPTA employees when it knew that it affected many, many other employees. Um, so uh, we believe it is just as important to get answers to these questions as it is to obtain legal relief um, for the individuals who've been victimized by this breach. Um, if we don't get those answers, then we think it will be way too easy for something like this to happen again. Um, and I don't think anybody wants that to happen. Uh, so with that, I will turn it over to Peter, who will talk about the, the, some of the specifics in the complaint. Again, thank you all for coming today. And basically, just to go as an overview, this case is filed as a putative class action lawsuit, uh, meaning there are one or two individuals that has stepped forward to represent the entire class of similarly situated uh, people in the state of Rhode Island that have been harmed by this data breach. Um, and we file specific um, causes of action, which one of them is violation of the Identity Theft Act, the state statute. It's the 
Rhode Island Identity Theft Act, and the second is the Confidentiality of Healthcare Communications Act, and that's particularly applicable to United Healthcare uh, with respect to the health care and health insurance information that they possess. Also, we've alleged negligence and negligence per se. It's uh, totally incomprehensible that a, an entity like United Healthcare uh, being part of one of United Healthcare of New England as part of one of the largest health insurance companies in the country would not have encrypted data and would send a file to rip that. It's particularly noteworthy that during the there was a Senate hearing, Rhode Island State Senate hearing. Uh, United Healthcare never participated and did not show up for that hearing. Um, so basically, the, the lawsuit is looking to compensate financially and we're lo the individuals, and we're looking for equitable relief, requiring the implementation of various safeguards, encryption of data, etc. Um, that's just a brief overview of the of the case. Yeah, you want to just move it all the way down because I have very limited remarks and it's going right to Allie. Uh, just wanted to say that um, with that we have also set up a um, uh, a standalone um, email address for any members of the uh, affected class. Um, uh, uh, or other folks who um, want to provide information to us or they're looking for information about uh, the lawsuit and um, it's a long, long run on word. RIPTA, data breach, pretty obvious, but R-I-P-T-A-D-A-T-A-B-R-E-A-C-H at R-I-A-C-L-U dot org. Uh, and that's uh, going live, I think, today. So welcome, everyone. All right, now let's get this to Alex. Excuse me. Do you want to move from you? It just clamps. Steve, can you just unclamp it? Wire. Wire? No wire? No wire? How's that? Yeah. It's just stuck under the bed. It'll work. It'll work? Okay. It might pull off. Like, how are you with that? Oh, perfect. Thank you. Wonderful. Please come around the bend. Good morning, everyone. My name is Alexandra, and I'm one of the plaintiffs in the class action lawsuit against RIPTA United Healthcare. From my understanding, thousands of individuals were affected, but I can personally speak to the stress that this has caused me. Earlier this year, I was notified about the data breach, and since then, my personal and financial information was compromised in multiple ways. Within a period of a few weeks, there were fraudulent withdrawals totaling thousands of dollars from my personal savings account, and several of my credit cards had fraudulent activities and purchases. Despite taking advantage of the free, free credit monitoring that was provided, I spent countless hours navigating a dysfunctional system without any assistance to undo the damage caused and prevent further damage. This entire experience was and has continued to be extremely frustrating and anxiety provoking. I submitted reports to the Federal Trade Commission, reached out to the RIPTA hotline several times, contacted the Department of Administration, filed reports to the local and state police, spent countless hours communicating with my bank, and contacted the Attorney General's office without any success. My last recourse was to contact the local news in hopes that someone could assist me. I'm still confused as to why and how my information was shared with RIPTA since I've never used this service, and extremely disappointed that RIPTA neglected to take responsibility and failed to advocate for myself and others affected besides con contracting with a hotline that provided inadequate support. To date, I'm still monitoring all activities and had to freeze several of my accounts. I've experienced the effect of the data breach around the time I was planning my wedding and remains a matter of concern during my pregnancy. Although I appreciate the work ACLU and the cooperating attorneys are doing, I'm not participating in this lawsuit because I'm happy to do so. I'm participating in hopes to bring awareness to this issue and help others that may have been impacted or will be impacted by this data breach. There must be many other people like me who had to deal with the problems and anxiety this has caused. It's another reason I feel this lawsuit is important because nobody else should have to go through this taxing experience. Thank you. How do you feel about all this? I don't know. <laughs> it depends on the day. Okay. Uh, it depends on the day. I feel I am confused. Sometimes I'm frustrated. Um, yeah, the waiting of emotions. Are you without actual money? 
as a result of this? Not anymore. I was, I did get the money back. It was a significant amount of money, but also the time I had spent getting that money back, and even now, the time I'm spending now doing this is money. Are you a state employee or how do you get broken? Yes, I am a state employee. And, and you'll, you still will be through this? Yes. And how are you confident that the data breach is responsible for the fraudulent charges that were on your account? More or less the timing. Is there something you want to add? I've never had anything like this happen to me before, so the timing of everything. So Peter, question for you. The amount of plaintiffs, is it the 17,000 number of the state employees and then the 5,000, what's, what's, the, what's the plaintiff number? That, that's part of what, there's been so much confusion about, we think it's in the 22,000 range, okay. the total plaintiffs, but uh, there were mixed messages as to what categories and who was affected at first, as Stephen Brown mentioned, at the beginning they indicated there was only uh, 5,000, I believe, uh, affected individuals. So have you reached out to all, do you have the names and contacts with all these individuals? Are you asking them to contact you via the email? Co correct. The way this happens is we don't have information to the 22,000. We file a class action lawsuit. We go to the court. It's called a putative class action. We request the judge to issue a class certification motion. And if that motion is approved and the class is certified, then we have access to the entire class. Now, that being said, we have been contacted, the ACLU has been contacted by numerous, numerous individuals. So there's a great concern uh, amongst all of these individuals for their financial well-being. And just one follow-up, the, the hearing that you mentioned that United Health didn't show up to, what exactly was that? That was a hearing by the Rhode Island State Senate where they, uh, it was in January of this year, where they had a hearing on the issue of the data breach, and the uh, United Healthcare did not show up. The hearing, uh, ripped their employees did show up, and it was a hearing where the Senate committee, in an unusual fashion, it's not usually done in the legislative process, put the uh, individuals testifying under oath. And RIP employees did show up and testify, but United Health did not. Did United Health not show up because they knew they were going to get sued? Uh, that's a tough question. <laughs> Ask them that question. Your first hurdle is the certification as a class. Correct. Say that happens, and granted, I mean, how do you assess the chances of success in this case? <laughs> we assess the chances of success very good according to the allegations of negligence, negligence per se, that we've alleged in the Identity Theft Protection Act, plus the violation of the Confidential Communications Act. You, the United Healthcare had confidential information, healthcare information of individuals, and willy-nilly sent the file off that had nothing to do with RIPTA with other state employees involved. That seems fairly inexplicable that they right. would do that. That's right. As I said, incomprehensible that an entity that size uh, United Healthcare of New England, which is part of United Healthcare Insurance Company nationwide, they are, I believe, the largest health insurer in the country with the most members. Would not have would would do something that lacks. Peter, a couple of questions. So, has United Healthcare been involved in any other data breaches around the country? Is my first part of the question. Second part: Is there any other case law of any other large-scale organizations um, with similar type of data breaches? And if so, what were those outcomes? So the best I know is I have not seen any United Healthcare data breach cases. Yes, there are many, many other data breach cases nationally. And there have been many settlements um, with data breaches, the T-Mobile settlement, the Equifax settlement. Um, so there have been significant recovery for individuals in some of these other data breach lawsuits. And, and with respect to health data breaches, also, with respect to non-health data breaches, because you got two different categories. You have the personally identifiable information, social security number, et cetera, and then you have the personal health information, which sometimes is even more crucial to have, uh, more affects an individual even to a greater degree, the harm that that could cause. Would you Someone say spirited away our copies of the complaint. What court is this from? The Rhode Island uh, Superior Court. Superior. Would you say that RIPTA mishandled um, this breach and then it in turn put all these people at risk? Yes, it took 138 days to notify individuals 
and uh, state statute uh, provides a 45 day calendar day notice requirement. What's the penalty for that? They clearly, they clearly saw the state law. It's, an out, it's a violation of state law, and we are alleging in the complaint asking for damages to compensate for that. Are you aware of any other um, investigations being done federally or on the state level, let's say the Attorney General or the State Police, are they doing something? And how will this affect that investigation? I understand that the Office of the Inspector General federally is looking at this, and I believe uh, through press articles that the Rhode Island Attorney General is looking at that. And this should not affect those investigations because we are looking for <coughs> compensation for the individuals, the individuals that have been harmed. Usually when governmental entities take action, a lot of times they provide fines and uh, to the companies, and, they, and a lot of times this is not individual compensation to each injured class member. Um, Sandra, well, a financial settlement make this better in the end for you? Will it help? I, I think I've already done a lot of, I'm participating in this to help others that may be affected. I've already done what I needed to do to help myself. What was more frustrating is that there is no support and there, there was no support and there continues to be no support. So for me, I hope this works out. It doesn't. You didn't work for RIPTA. No. You worked for UR Law? Yeah. And still do. Yes. Um, where, are you, where are you from? Where are you from? I live in Coventry. I'm in Rhode Island. Okay. RIPTA said about an hour ago that they hadn't been notified um, about this lawsuit or had been served anything. Do you, is that still the case? And do you have a timeline for when they can expect to be notified? Yes, the case will be filed today. And with uh, you know this issue with RIPTA, is this something that you would call for possibly with some other issues going on for the stepping down of CEO uh, of Adesian? Uh, with respect to this lawsuit, we're not going to get involved in that kind of dis discussion at all. And, and we'll see there's a trail. You sent the, you gave us a, a couple of uh, pieces of correspondence. Um, did that trail just end? It, it just mm -hmm. ended like last December is their last response to you? Yes. Um, so when uh, when uh, we learned about uh, the breach in December of all the information, uh, we sent a letter to RIPTA raising a number of questions, trying to get answers. They did send us a response initially, uh, but from my perspective, their response only raised more questions and we sent a follow-up letter that we did not hear back from. And as I, as I said at the beginning, that remains one of the most frustrating things about all this, not just the harm that's been caused, but the fact that we have so few answers to how something as um, massive as this could happen. And I know you've set the questions out, um, so apologies that's been there. Do, you, do we know when this data was transferred to RIPTA when they were in possession of this edition? Is that one of the things they continue to refuse to answer? Um, the sort of, the, the nuts and bolts of how the data was transferred from UH United Health to RIPTA. Obviously finding out about the breach is a little more difficult, so do we know, is that one of the things they refuse to answer? And we, we don't know, um, and information that was given at the Senate hearing that uh, Peter talked about was, was not very helpful in, in providing us uh, some sunlight on those questions. It's possible. Is, um, is uh, RIPTA on the hook for this as they're out of their budget or will this come out of state funds? I just wonder because RIPTA is very underfunded and probably won't be able to afford a very big lawsuit. Again, that that's to be determined. You know, there could be uh, there could be insurance involved. We we have no idea at this point. Okay. Is this lawsuit meant to put some pressure on them to answer those questions, or is it an, is it possible we may never find out even as this goes through? Well, we're hoping that it will put pressure, and through the litigation and the discovery process, the litigation, we're hoping to get all the answers. Anything else? All right, thank you very much. As I said, uh, if you want a copy of the complaint, we've made co we're, we should have made copies of how we can do one. Check with me. Um, we're happy to, to do one anyway. Yeah. Sorry for the mix up, but that's the original. We'll be posting it online. Yes. Yeah.